Hey guys, in this video, what I'll be doing is setting up AWS Cognito service. If you haven't heard of AWS, uh, it's a Amazon's web service, which is an infrastructure as a service. And what I mean by that is that you can really build out everything you need for apps or mobile using this um, system. It's cloud-based. Uh, and what we're going to be doing in this video is they have a mobile services for Cognito. So Amazon Cognito allows you to sign into your apps and as well as to use your resources. So if you haven't, if you don't have a AWS account set up, there is a free tier so that way you guys can join along. So I would say pause the video, go ahead and sign up so that way you can follow along in this video. I already have an AWS account, so I'm just going to go ahead and sign in. Okay, guys, so now I'm all signed in. And the first thing I'm going to want to do is I'm going to want to click on services. And then under mobile services, I'm going to click Cognito. So Cognito, like I said, is a way to allow users to sign up or sign in um, to synchronize data across multiple devices, as well as to provide access to resources. So if you want someone to be able to add something to your database, or you want someone to be able to pull down photos or store photos into your storage or S3 buckets, um, this is the way to do it. And we'll go into that a little later. But in this video, we're just going to set up an unauthorized user. And what we're going to want to do uh, in the next video is allow that user to download photos from our S3 bucket. So that's kind of the end goal for this one. But we have to set up this first. The first thing we're going to, we're going to want to do is when you hit this home page, we're going to hit Manage Federated Identities. And then we're just going to give our identity a, a name. Right, so I'm just going to add the name to my app. I'm just going to say AWS iOS test app. Okay, and then I'm just going to, for this unauthenticated users, I'm just going to check enable access to authentic, unauthenticated identities. So what's the alternative is authentication. So we have a bunch of different ways with either using federated services, um, Facebook, Google, Twitter, etc. I'm not going to do that in this video. I'm just going to want to allow uh, our app to download pictures. So I don't really care, you know, to have the sign up part. And I'm just going to click create pool. All right, and you can actually view the details. Uh, you have your role names uh, created, and as long as I haven't actually done it before, it says successful, everything's great. Now, it takes you to uh, this page to set up the Amazon Cognito in your application. You could just change the platform, so I'm just going to select Swift. Now, AWS now has CocoaPods, so you don't necessarily need to download the SDK. You can install the CocoaPods, so that's what we're going to do. So I'm gonna go ahead and hop into Xcode since we're at this point and create a new project. All right, so here I'm in Xcode um, and I'm just going to create a single view application. I'm just going to name it iOS AWS sample. You can name it whatever you want. All right, so here we are in our app. And what we want to do is first, we're going to want to install our CocoaPod. So, all right, so I'm just going to change my directory. All right, so now I'm in my directory and I'm just going to pod init. This is going to create the pod file. If you need information about how to do this, you can just Google it, uh, but you have to make sure you have CocoaPods installed on your desktop, laptop, whatever. So if I ls-l, I now have this pod file. So I'm just gonna nano into it. And I'm just going to go ahead and add the pods. So I'm going to add pod pod AWS 
incognito and pod AWS core. And where am I getting that from? I'm just getting that from here. So you'll need the core and you'll need the AWS Cognito for this tutorial. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and save my changes and then pod install. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and close my project here because now we just need to open the workspace that was created. So I'm gonna say open star workspace, XC workspace. All right, so now we have our pods installed in this project, our Cognito and our core. All right, so now that we've done that, what we want to do is let's go ahead and just go into our view controller Actually, we can actually do this in our app delegate because since we're not going to require a user to actually do anything as far as sign up, we could just make it so once the app loads, they're already uh, going to be synced within our Cognito or AWS. So I'm gonna just say import AWS Cognito, import AWS Core. And remember, if these start giving you the little red marks, but you've installed it, so see it's saying that it doesn't exist, uh, no such module. So you could just clean and build it a couple times and then it'll start showing through. But let's do that. Let's clean and build it. Now the instructions for setting this up are pretty accurate. Uh, and we're just going to actually just need to copy and paste this stuff. Uh, the first thing we want to want to do is we're going to want to create a credential provider, which is going to be an AWS uh, Cognito credential provider. And this is going, this string here is going to be different for you than it is for me. So you could just copy this whole section and just paste it right here in your view did launch. So I'm just going to paste that there. And what it's saying is that I have a credential provider. Uh, I have a configuration, which is AWS service configuration. US East one is the SDK, uh, the default for SDK. And this is actually going to just be default now. So you probably have to just update that. Then what we want to do the next part, if we go back is store user data. So this is for like, if you want to be able to sync this user, because we don't actually have the information uh, as far as where they're signing in from. Maybe you want to store their high score or some information about themselves or you know some other information you want to grab and, and sync across. So I'm just gonna grab this. And I'm just going to keep these values the same so you guys can see exactly where it's coming from. A lot of this stuff has changed, so you'll probably have a couple things in here that you need to get rid of. Okay. And we're not actually modifying that, so we can just change that to let right now. You can do things like print this stuff out. And what you're doing here is basically you're creating a record in the data set and synchronizing it with your server, with the server. So if the, like I said, if the user has a high score or some type of preference, you can set this here. And you can set as many of these as you want to. So we have right now just the uh, value could be high score, um, or the, the key could be high score for value. And you can just load these within your program. We're not gonna worry about it right now. I just wanna show you guys how this works. And then after that, that is actually it. So it didn't take much to set this connection up. So let's see exactly what it does. So I'm just going to open AWS again. All right, so here's AWS. And let's just look at what we have. So. Once you create your pool, this is what you're going to get. So it's going to show you AWS and it's going to actually, if you click on this, it's like a dashboard and you can see how many users uh, have synced across different platforms, whether it be iOS or Android. We didn't set up anything for authenticated users using Google, Facebook authentication. 
Uh, so we won't have anything like that. So let's go ahead and run this application and see what it does to this. So I'm just gonna scoot this down a little bit. I'm just gonna hit play on this. We didn't actually build anything, so you're not gonna actually get an app here, but we're gonna see what it does uh, once we actually sign this up. So just going to push this here, stretch this out a little bit. All right, so as you see, I've refreshed the page and we actually see that our app has started running. We don't have anything here, so it's a blank page, but you do see that we have this hit here. So we've actually were able to successfully not only sync this month, but we also were able to touch this. So this means that we'll actually have access to grab different resources. And in our next video, we're going to use this starting point to pull down an image from an S3 bucket. This was really quick. Now I did a lot of talking, but if I didn't do any talking, probably take me five minutes to set this up. Super quick, super easy a great way to get access to AWS. And if you guys have any questions, comments, or concerns, put them in the comments below and hopefully I'll be able to address them prior to the next video. Um, and I will see you guys later. Bye.